It's me, Renee, I'm back. And this, as you can see, is my March TBR. Is it a bit excessive? Maybe. Um, but what? And I'm not ambitious with my TBRs? Never? Yes, never. So, yeah. Let's get to it. Um, so yeah, March, it's the, uh, it's the International Day for Females, or for Women. 8th of March. So, because of that, a lot of these are kind of inspired by that, feminist books, in some ways or another. Uh, also, I feel like I was about to say something else. Um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, some of these you saw in like my team from last week, when I like books I want to try before like, the last the end of February. That's probably not going to happen. But like, this week, like the first week of March is also like includes two days of February, so I suppose yeah, some of the books from other TBRs are rolling over into the, into this TBR. So surprise, surprise, and yeah, that's how it started really with me. And yeah, yeah, let's get to them. Um, except on this like being feminist focused, there's not really another team, team, another theme besides that. There might be like some readathons that are going on, but I haven't really uh, like checked out what they are and stuff. I suppose maybe I'll join them, but I think I'm, if I'm going to join them, I probably will, I think, want to use some of these books. Like, because I can also like use books that I already have on my TV to like just kind of cross off uh, for readathons. Because why not? That's a fun way of doing it. And um, yeah, yes, let's get to the books, shall we? First, we have Dying of Politeness, the biography of Gina Davis. So, so she used to be an actress. Well, used to be. She's still an actress, but I would say mo now she's kind of mostly focused on, like, being behind the scenes. She's, I think she's producing stuff. She's kind of, uh, she's giving money to, like, uh, to re research to try to get more females represented, represented in, in, like, uh, behind the camera, in front of the camera. All that kind of stuff. So yeah, this is a movie of her life in Hollywood. And as a Hollywood, I'm not really sure how how it is. Like I think I feel like most most biographies are like at least like if they're autobiographies, which which one this one is. I feel like most of them aren't like that juicy. And like they're not like that part of. It's not like that much into their past life. It's more about like what they did when that and that happened in their career but yeah still kind of want to read it i really like autobiographies so yeah i suppose yeah i could spare you I could save this one for non-fiction remember but i kind of want to read it now so yeah it fem it's feminist definitely so yeah and then we have know my name by channel miller and this is the autobiography of the woman who was um raped or almost raped yeah raped um yeah, at stanford uh so that's kind of and she was um raped or um, she was blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah it's a brock turner case and uh, so like uh she was stopped going further by some uh swedish tourists but it kind of got to a far longer place than it should have gone and um, yeah um interested to read this it will be gonna be fascinating probably some hard hitting in it but yeah fascinating you can't really read just uh, flowers and happiness sometimes you have to read some upsetting fascinating stuff fascinating sounds weird yeah you know and then we have why women read fiction by helen taylor i've started this book like last year i've read like oh yeah my Pokemon is gone, but yeah, I read like two pages in it, so it was started very slightly, but still. And yeah, it's an interesting non fiction about why females love to read. And uh, yeah, uh, then we have Wench by uh, Maxine Kaplan. This was uh, originally a comic book, and then she turned it into a, a not comic book, a word book. What? I mean, Comic books are comic books, but like, what's it? What's the? How how do you how how do you talk about these books? Is it word books? But comic books also have words in them. 
I don't know. If you want to jump in on this conversation, that's fun. If you know the answer, please tell me. And uh, yeah, anyway, historical fun, uh, rompy fiction. And yeah, very excited to get to it. Had it for like over a year. Not ready yet. Uh, but yeah. And then we have Lord's Hupestne Visker by Yvette Mansis Copro. This is a uh, book, it's book of the month in the bookstore where I work. And you know what, give me a moment. Yes, I'm back. Um, so yeah, I just kind of charge my battery. Uh, yeah, it's set in um, blah 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 uh, Greece. So yeah, it's gonna be a fun, interesting to read, I think. And then we have A Maid of Steel which it's a murder mystery set at a cruise ship and also set during Soviet era but in Ireland so it's Irish perspective of the Soviet time but yeah there's also mystery or murder in it so yeah kind of excited for that I think that sounds like my kind of jam and then we have Quinness B which I actually forgot to hold but yeah it's Norwegian book but I think I kind of like the concept of this book, so I'm going to explain it to you. But I suppose I kind of have to because you don't read Norwegian. I suppose then again, I'm kind of assuming you don't read Norwegian. Maybe some of you do. Maybe I have some Norwegian views. I don't really know. Uh, but yeah, so this is written by Marta Brian, Helene Uri, or and Hilda Stevie, three Norwegian female female authors, and they both all are kind of writing writing in the feminist. Era feminist, feminist kind of, yeah, feminist era, feminist genre in a way. Like they all often have like feminists in their books. But yeah, this is a non-fiction book though, uh, and it's all about um, how most uh, street names in uh, Norway, well, actually in the world, I think they talk about, but at least in Norway, a lot of street names are. Okay, so either it's like, if it's not like the main street or like uh, North Street, South Street, like streets are kind of like those kind of general names like that. If it's like, if it's a street named after a person, 99% of the time it's named after a man. And also quite a lot of uh, men have like several streets in their mouth for themselves. And also, like, even, like, nowadays, like, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, when, like, because sometimes, not often, like, sometimes you, you're building a new place and you kind of you build a whole new street, you have to have a name for the street. Uh, they still kind of end up naming it, like, Old Street or New Street, instead of, like, finding any women you can name them after, which, yeah, there's quite a lot of women in the world who make a difference. And also, like, there's also... Uh, quite a lot of statues that are all men, very few females. And like, if there's some of some of the um, uh, women, it's kind of like it's like general you know, like woman or mother. While uh, so it's like a symbolic thing. While the statues based on men are often like based on this and this specific person, like this or for this prime minister, what have you. So yeah. So in this book. Marta Brian, Helena Uri, and Hilda Stubi, they've taken the map of Oslo, which is Norway's capital, in case you don't know, and rewritten them and kind of given different streets uh, names related to female, related to men, women, instead of men. Uh, so it's in a way, I suppose it's in a way like a tourism guide, but like a, a for like alternative Oslo, because this is not how it is, but it's how they kind of imagine or hope it could be one day or like hope it would be today and uh yeah so definitely uh very excited to read this book i don't really know if this kind of thing exists in english well, like it looks like like it could exist in english i mean there's books about like feminism in english yeah but if this kind of uh, around street names i'm not really sure if you have that in english though i suppose i don't know about old feminist books that exist in english so i can't really say speak to that but yeah it's definitely the person who's kind of annoying and uh, yeah excited to read it so like yeah 
Um, yes, definitely excited to read it. Check it out. And then we have another non-fiction book. We have Difficult Woman, A History of Feminism in 11 Fights. Uh, so, <laughs> funny story. But, okay, so I bought this last year. And yeah, I, I love feminism, so I, I will always buy all the feminist books. But yeah, yeah, I just kind of, I read the title and I didn't really read it back. And for some reason, I felt like it was like 11 fights, like, uh, like, directly, like, it was like the fight when, when you have female soldiers in the, in the, in the First World War, female soldiers in Second World War, the, like, like, direct fights, not like, metaphorically, and then I read the back, like, oh, it's metaphorically. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I had, like, this idea of all, all about females who were boxers and stuff, but yeah, yeah, it, it's more general, like, suffragettes and all, all that, all kinds of people, but still, it's interesting, uh, the fights you, that are in this book, it is, blah, blah, and the fight for divorce, the votes, Okay, so it's kind of like, uh, just kind of giving some notes here. So it just says notes, sex, play, also play fights? What? Couldn't female women play in the old days? I'm not quite sure. Educational time, abortion. I suppose some of them I kind of understand, some of them I don't. But yeah, I suppose good way, good I don't understand it because they'll be enlightened when I read it. So, yeah. And then we have The Marlers. By Donnell Clayton, first in a series, middle grade series, with witches and like this whole like it's a whole what's the word again? Uh, alternative, not alternative, like um, yeah, it's kind of a world within our world. It's an urban fantasy, but like with a whole different um, uh, different society within our society and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, uh, very much looking forward to reading this one. Been yeah, excited to read it. Ever since heard about it, so yeah. And yeah, then we have the people, the book, the people, the books that I didn't read uh, in the weekend, uh, but still want to read like soon in March this week. Not sure, but yeah, soonish. We have Hamilton R Battalion, a tree of romances by Rose Loner, Courtney Milan, Elizabeth Cole, historical romances, three stories. Talk about it before, so we just kind of move on. Someone in time, an apology with uh, romances set in during a time travel or like you know, like with time travel twist to it. And then we have the Jasmine Throne by Tasha Tasha Shuri. Heard very good things about this one. It's a bit chunky, but yeah, heard great things about it. Want to try it out? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Gen Generation Wonder. Uh, it's an anthology of superheroes, but also romances. Superhero romances. I also have it on audiobook, so I can go to the old, old book, audiobook if you wanted to do, do that. And then we have The Gunko by Stephen Rowley, a very funny book that I heard lots of good things about. And Take Me Home Tonight by Morgan Madsen. It's a Morgan Madsen book, so it's going to be cute, lovely, with some deep themes and things that make you think. And uh, yeah, definitely want to still very much want to read it. So yeah, uh, and even after all these books, you know what, even now, I still kind of want to add a few more. So I'm going to unwrap, I'm going to unwrap my books. And yeah, so in case you didn't remember what all these things is going on, like what's the deal, deal with this? I have like a thing in December, December? December where like I wrapped my unread books myself because I thought like okay if I wanna if I maybe get, I can wrap them and then I can open up and then I can read them but yeah uh, I'm a mood reader so it doesn't really do like it doesn't really matter if I move them to a different shelf or, like if I wrap them if I'm not in the mood I'm not, not in the mood but still I didn't unwrap them like all because I kind of fun think like it's kind of fun to open books for myself it's kind of like a bit of the present for myself, whenever. And yeah, uh, yeah, I already have like quite extensive uh, TBR. But you know what? Uh, what am I if not ambitious? And also, I love to have options. So yeah, 
here I have some more books to have as an option for March. And also March is long in February, so you have more days to read, so yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna open this book here. Also you might ask yourself, well, why four books? Why not three? Because March is the third month and what have you. Well, four books because I have three nieces and nephews. Um, well, sorry, actually I have uh, five, but yeah. Uh, but, sorry, yeah, five. Uh, but three of them are uh, turning four in March. No, not in March, in May, but yeah, they're turning four this year. So, you know what? Four. Why not? Uh, blah, 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 blah. We have Cemetery Voice by Aidan Thomas. Yeah. Very, very much want to read this one. Heard lots of good things about it. I have not read it yet. Also, have an audiobook, so yeah, can like. Do a switch room and like doing it on both formats, and uh, yeah, hopefully, this will get me to actually read it or at least like start it. Let's see what well, this book is new. Blah, 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 blah. Ah, it is City of Villains by Estelle Laurie. This is, I want to say, urban fantasy, but it's uh, like a urban mm. fantasy ish story where like the I think it's set in like contemporary world, if not contemporary, I will at least contemporary ish world. And like the villains in this book is like the Disney villains. It's a YA book, but yeah, it's not a long book. And uh, yeah, excited to read it. Hopefully, yeah, I will. But yeah. It's fun books so far, not books that I am in the post, I suppose. Yeah, so sometimes like. You buy books and they kind of end up on my t on your TBR for a long time, and then you look at them again. It's like, why did you buy this? These two books I'm still excited for. So, yeah. Hopefully that trend will pick up. I mean, so far this year I've read, I read quite a lot, but I also have quite a lot of DNFs, sadly. Hopefully that will kind of stop. Uh, but yeah. Ooh, How about Santiago and the River of Tears? It's a Rick Riordan Presents book. Definitely, definitely excited for this one. So yeah, uh, so far the Rick Riordan Presents books, like the ones I've really, very really much enjoyed have been Aru Star series and the others haven't enjoyed that much. But I still want to give it a go. Like I still haven't given up on that. I really like the idea. And also like the Rick Riordan Presents books, they're all by different authors. So it's not like if you don't like some books, you want like other books because I... I love mythology from around the world, and I love like the Rick Ryden idea of like having it being very fun and same style as Pre-Jo, so yeah. Then we have the fourth one, fourth one, fourth one, being this book, not sure what book it is, interested, ooh, very one, thank you very much for March, that there she know. For telling it of Nietzsche's Revolution, so it's a non fiction story, no, sorry, non fiction essay collection uh, from Norway, all about, yeah, the uh, feminist fight and how it's still not over. And uh, yeah, uh, why I haven't really finished this one, I don't know, I haven't. So yeah, and it's also it's an essay collection, so it's, I feel like the, those are kind of easier to get through than other books and whatnot. And it's under 200 pages, so again, not long at all, so, yeah. So yeah, that's kind of my plan for March. I hope you enjoy my little peek into my March reading plans. And yeah, see you soon. As always, if you have comments or whatnot, talk to me in the comments. Bye!